This demonstration illustrates model-based design and BIM in transportation, going through the complete life cycle of a transportation project. The project I'm going to show you today involves the relocation of an intersection to accommodate a new interchange that will be built along our highway. In moving the intersection, a small portion of the alignment will also be reconfigured. So let's start with conceptual design. One thing in conceptual design we want to do is to take into consideration agricultural lands in the area. So we can bring in readily available land use information that we have into our drawing and then make those objects now parcels um, so that we can lay out an alignment that subsequently interacts with those par parcels as it's created and modified. Areas of taking can then be placed in a table to make it easier to see the land that's impacted. So you can see as we pass through the parcels, they're automatically bisected. And then that area can then be placed in a table. AutoCAD Civil 3D 2010 has added functionality that enables the storing of offset alignments that maintain their relationship to the parent alignment, so that the new right-of-way location can be simulated. Uh, when a change to the center line alignment is made, the assumed right-of-way alignment also changes, provided a, providing a more accurate picture of the number of acres of land that will be taken with the proposed alignment. And again, those, um, those parcels, the area is placed in a table so it's easy to see the impact immediately. So once the information regarding the proposed alignment is made, we can move on to detail design and look at the intersection design features in Civil 3D 2010. So it's a pretty automated uh, way of, of creating an intersection model where you select the intersection point and the main road and then a wizard is, is, is then used to generate the intersection. So you simply press create intersection and the model is generated for you automatically. The nice thing is that all of the information in the model is interrelated so that if you make a change to something like the main road profile, it's automatically reflected in the side road profile and the corridor. Next, we're going to move on to um, the collaboration with our structural engineer with the new bridge modeling extension. So sites designed by the civil engineer and civil 3D can be imported directly into the bridge modeling extension and used to quickly generate accurate topographic surfaces. So the center line of the road from civil 3D can also be imported directly into the extension using the industry standard file format, Land XML. When the center line is brought in, it compiles automatically once, once imported, providing assurance that the bridge geometry we are creating matches what the civil engineer created in Civil 3D. So the bridge engineer can now focus on defining critical layout information, such as specifying the number of spans based on the overall length of the bridge, defining the deck properties, and defining the abutment type and location, and the pier type and location. With all the information from the civil engineer, and the parameters defined by the bridge engineer, the bridge is instantly modeled. So now that we have our bridge modeled and the site created, we can adjust the parameters of the various bridge component to match the site conditions. So any changes made to the model are automatically propagated throughout the model and all views, such as sections, details, and schedules. Which brings us to visualization. Being able to visualize the project before it's built helps government agencies and community stakeholders better understand how the project will perform. Using Autodesk 3DS Max Design 2010 software and Dynamite VSP, a product from our partner 3AM Solutions, we can develop a project visualization showing the planned highway improvements. Being able to accurately convey design intent will help reduce obstacles and objections and streamline project approvals for our customers. With approvals in place, we move to the creation of plan documents. Here we're going to use AutoCAD to put together the traffic control plan for the project. So using AutoCAD, we can automate repetitive tasks such as placing traffic control signage and pavement marking. Here we're placing some barrels. Now one of the key improvements in AutoCAD 2010 is the PDF output capabilities. So here we now export true type fonts as text rather than graphics so that it is now searchable, which complies with many ePlans um, specifications. With documents complete, we move to construction. So here we're going to use the new quantity takeoff functionality in Civil 3D 2010 to streamline the process of extracting quantities directly from the model. 
So you can assign pay items to objects in the model and have the software automatically count those objects, eliminating the need for manual work and greatly reducing the chance of error. While the design team generates the model that's used to build the project and construction using Civil 3D, utility companies and municipalities may pro provide information to the construction management team that locates sanitary pipe networks, gas lines, and telephone lines, to name a few. Using Autodesk Navisworks Manage in the field provides a real-time, whole project view. The goal is to anticipate problems in the field before construction begins. So using Navisworks, the construction manager is able to integrate information from different sources and use the clash detection feature to perform interference checking to highlight potential problems before the contractor begins work. Information on clashes is displayed in a table and also graphically as shown here. Once the project is built, it continues to live in operations maintenance and asset management. So here we're going to turn to TopoBase. TopoBase is essentially a database that allows customers to maintain their infrastructure in a single source of truth. The existing conditions in the database can now be updated with the as-built information. Once the update is made, the information will be posted so that the most up-to-date conditions are available to the entire organization. Additional attributes can be defined as well, making the data more robust. With the information in the database, it can be used for various types of analysis, such as reporting on miles of concrete roadway in a county, for example. Being able to capture information for each asset, in this case the roadway centerline, without having to recreate or redigitize, increases the validity and value of the data. The information can be leveraged downstream in operations and maintenance to assist in decision making and can be used when the roadway is rehabbed or rehabilitated, allowing for continuity of data. So the life cycle is complete, starting from conceptual design, moving into detailed design, construction, operations and maintenance, and into asset management.